Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in this video I want to talk to you about what printer you should use to print your own photo books or books. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you like what you see give this video a thumbs up. So first of all, so many of you have been asking in comments what printer you should use especially after watching my DIY videos of making my own photo books but I've got so many emails as well from folks saying that they want to start up their photo book business and they're asking for advice what printer to use. And normally I don't respond to these emails, not because I'm rude or because I want to ignore anyone. It's simply because there are so many variables and this is such a complex question that I would need to write a short novel back to everybody in order to give any kind of information. So instead, I decided to make this video and hopefully if you watch this, it's gonna give you some kind of help in this question. So first thing first, I want to just put a couple of disclaimers here. So this video is going to be about printing your photo book at home for yourself. If you want to set up a business and buy big equipment and make photo books in bulk, this video is not for you. I'm not going to talk about those printers because I've never used them. They are way too expensive and it's not for a DIY project. Number two, I'm going to mention some printers in this video and and these ones are not the only ones that you can use these are ones that I've had experience with and I can talk about but I am not affiliated with any of these companies and I am not paid to talk about these specific printers or brands so this is not the sponsored video. So let's start with talking about print methods and then I will talk about the difference in quality, the difference in price availability of paper and inks and all of those things that really matter when you start making a photo book. So number one is print methods. When it comes to photo books, I think there are generally four kinds of print methods. One is the offset or indigo printers, which kind of fall into the same category. These are gigantic printers and they work by using three colors, usually CMY or even more. Offset printers, use pre-made plates that kind of transfer the print onto the paper from ink. Those ones are best for really large volume books, so like thousands of copies. They're really fast, very efficient, but you have to make basically a plate for every single page. So you can't use this at home at all. It's a huge investment and even photo book companies don't use them because it's not suitable for one-off projects. The indigo printers work on the same basis that they basically put the print onto the page with cylinders but these ones do not require a plate so they are good for short runs. Now an indigo printer is really expensive and it's a huge piece of equipment so again it's not something that you would want to have in your home especially if you are making photo books for yourself but if you are a startup business and you have quite a big capital to invest then an indigo printer is usually the best one to start off with or a silver halide printer. So the second category is silver halide printers which are photographic printers and again these require quite a bit of training, they work with chemicals so there is a health and safety issue there as well and the printers are quite expensive, well above £10,000 so again it's not suitable for home printing but indigo printers or um, silver halide printers are the best option for a small startup business if you have capital. Now we're going to come to the two categories which are actually useful if you print photo books for yourself at home and that is the laser printers and inkjet printers and these are the two categories I'm going to be comparing in this video. Both of these are accessible at home although there are going to be big differences in cost. Let me first divert your attention to the difference in the price of the printers and the setup cost. So I think most of you are familiar with laser printers and inkjet printers. The main difference is that a laser printer basically uses toner and that goes on the surface of the paper, it gets burnt in and inkjet papers use droplets of ink which kind of are absorbed by the paper and that's how the print is created. They are both digital methods, you don't require a plate so the printer can print anything um, but there is a big difference in the cost of the printer and the quality of the print and the cost of the print. So not just the cost of the printer but also the cost of the print. So let's start with the printers. 
The size really matters what you can print because if you print photo books, which are going to be folded pages, so signatures or double pages folded into two, then you can't really do much with an A4 or letter size printer because when you fold that, it's going to be A4 or a six by eight inch size. And that's very small, so it's very limiting to how big your photo book can be. If you're happy with that size, then it's great because these printers are quite cheap. But if you want to go bigger than that, you need at least an A3 printer. And an A3 is like a 16 by 12 inch size. So when you fold it into two, you can still get a letter size book or an A4 size book and it's going to be a portrait book. If you want a big landscape book, then you need a really big printer, which you can't really find in the consumer market, or you can do it as a non-folding book. So basically, this book is printed as A4 sheets, as you can see, but it's printed as a single A4 sheet and then it's bound at the edge. And this allows you to make much bigger photo books without a very big printer because you can print them as single sheets and bind them at the spine. Now, the traditional binding method would be like this, where you basically have the book and it's printed as an A3 sheet in this case, but then it's folded. So the book is going to be A4. And in this case, you basically have to double the size of the book that your printer has to be able to print. So if this one is an A4 size, the printer has to be able to print at least A3 size. And if you want to have some bleed, even bigger. This is really important when it comes to selecting a printer because if you buy a too small printer, you're going to be very limited with what you can print and what size you can print. Now, if you want to have a look at inkjet printers, an A4 inkjet printer is so cheap, you can get them at around 50 pounds with a two set, a two ink configuration. So you've got a color ink and you've got a black ink, or you can get for a hundred pounds a four color version where you have separate inks for a C, M, Y and the black one, which is much better because if one of them runs out, you can replace the one that's run out instead of replacing the entire color ink, wasting so much ink. When it comes to laser printers, the, the cheapest decent laser printer A4 size that I could find was the Xerox C400 and that's 400 pounds and it's a much bigger machine and much heavier as well. So the price difference is quite big, 50 pounds for the cheapest inkjet, which would be um, a Canon uh, Pixma TS3350, uh, that would be around 50 pounds and the cheapest laser, which would be the Xerox Versaling C400, that would be around 400 pounds. So you can already see there is a big difference in the startup cost. Now, when we get to A3, the difference is even bigger. A good A3 printer is going to have, again, separated colors. Now, a basic one, which is the Pixma Canon IX6850, I have one of those. It uses five inks, and that's an A3 inkjet printer. It is 160 pounds, and it comes with the startup inks. So that's a very good price for an A3 printer. And if you want a laser version of that, a laser A3 printer, then the Xerox Versaling C8000 is going to set you back 1500 pounds, so 1500, so almost 10 times the price of the inkjet printer. Now with the inkjet printer, you've got more options depending on how much quality matters to you. The standard one that I said is four colors is 160 pounds, but if you select the Canon ProGraph, 300, which is an A3 printer, and it uses 10 different inks for a much better color range, that's going to be uh, 700 pounds. And if you want to go for the ProGraph 1000, which can print an A2 size, again, with 10 inks, that's going to be a thousand pounds. So the price goes up a lot, but to start off, you can use the Pixma 6850 for 160 pounds, as opposed to the Xerox, which is 1500. So I hope this section gave you a little information about the startup cost when, when buying printers. So an inkjet is always going to be a lot, lot cheaper to buy. 
However, the story doesn't end there. We have to talk about the price of the print. And as most of you know, laser printers are always cheaper per print than inkjet printers. And although I think it's completely impossible to estimate the price of a print, especially because the coverage is going to be different on every single page in a photo book, but the average price is always going to be a lot cheaper on a laser printer than on a inkjet printer. So if you're printing just one book for yourself, then it's gonna be a lot cheaper to use the inkjet printer because the startup inks might be enough that come with a printer, might be enough to actually print out the entire book. With the laser printer, there's a huge startup cost and you might be able to print a lot more books than one, but you still have to pay the startup cost. Now with my C8000, I can print up to 30,000 pages with one set of toners, but with a Canon printer, usually the most it says you can print is 300 pages, but I never managed to do that. If you print photo books with like full color pages, it's going to kind of max out at around 150 pages, 120, depending again on the coverage and obviously the size of the print. I try to rely many times on the counter in the printer, which tells you, you know the supply levels, and that kind of should help you calculate the price of the prints, but those counters are complete rubbish. And I don't say this with ease. I've got sublimation printers, I've got laser printers and inkjet printers. My laser printer, which is supposed to be very accurate with the counter, told me last year in September that my magenta ink is at 1% and I can print 80 pages. Since then, I printed at least 4,700 pages and it's still not empty and it didn't show any striking or loss of quality. So the counter is completely unreliable in it and I just basically have to use the inks until I see that it runs out. With the inkjet one, the same thing happened. It showed me that um, the ink is about to be depleted and I still managed to print another photo book out with the same ink. The sublimation printer had the same issue. It's been telling me that the yellow and magenta is at 1% since May uh, and since then I printed a few hundred pages and it's still printing fine and when I do a nozzle check it's still at full capacity. So although you've got these counters and they tell you where the ink is and you think, oh, if I printed 100 pages and the ink is at 1%, then I can kind of calculate how much ink I use, but you can't because it's completely pointless. So now I talked about the price of the printer, the price of the ink. Let's talk a little bit about paper before we turn to the big and most important one, quality. So paper is just as important as your printer. Many people think that if you buy a great printer, it's gonna give you great prints, whatever you print on, but that's a load of rubbish. So a printer is only as good as the inks you use in it and the paper you print on. If you use the wrong paper in an inkjet printer, the colors are going to be horrific. Even if you use inkjet paper in an inkjet printer that it doesn't have an ICC profile for, the colors can look really off. The same can happen in a, in a laser printer if you don't have the right coating, the right whiteness. So what I'm trying to say here is that when you buy a printer, you really have to research the availability of the papers in your area because, for example, in my area, it's quite difficult to get certain kinds of laser papers. And you can't mix the two because laser printers work with heat, so the coating on inkjet papers is going to melt if you put it into a laser printer and you're going to destroy your laser printer. Now, for example, if I have a Canon printer, it has profiles for Canon papers, Canon matte, Canon glossy and so on. But if I put an Epson matte paper into my Canon printer, the colors are going to be again completely off because it's not been calibrated for that specific paper. And then you either have to get yourself an ICC profile by a company or you can basically adjust the color balance until you kind of see the results that you want to see. And that's what I've been doing with most of my papers. Another thing is that paper for inkjet printers tends to be a lot more expensive than for laser printers. And especially when it comes to art papers, for example, having 25 sheets of A3 paper for my inkjet printer can cost up to 50, 60 pounds double-sided paper, but the same for um, the laser printer can be as low as 10, 12 pounds. So one fifth of the cost. 
Now, another thing to think about is double-sided paper. If you print your photo book, like this one, for example, then you can just print on the front side and you can leave the back side empty. And in that case, you can use any paper which has coating on one side. But if you want to print it as a book, for example, like this one, and in that case, you have to print on both sides of the paper. So each side of the paper has to have the same coating and has to be able to provide the same quality. And in that case, thickness comes into play because if the paper is too thin, the print is going to show through on the two sides. So you, if you do double-sided printing, I would suggest at least 200 GSM. For single-sided printing, 120, 140, anything less than that is going to feel very cheap and very thin. The verdict here is that paper is cheaper for laser printers, but you've got far more options for um, inkjet printers when it comes to art papers, matte papers and different coatings. There's like hundreds of choices. The price is quite high, but you have the choice if you're looking for that specific paper finish. Now let's come to the final category, the quality, which is the most important when you want to print your photo books and the look matters to you. The main difference, as I said, between the two prints, laser and inkjet, is that the inkjet printer uses ink droplets which kind of absorb into the paper and they also kind of disperse around the area so they're not a sharp dot it's a liquid that's going to be absorbed into the paper but the laser printer uses toner in lines of laser beam and they are going to be burned into the paper so they are much sharper and that sharpness is very good when it comes to text but it's less good when it comes to skin tones and solid colors so the main difference that I see between these two prints, and I'm going to show you close-up pictures here now so you can really see it, is not so much in the color because you can always work around the colors, especially if it's only a four ink inkjet printer. The main difference is I can't get smooth block solid colors in my laser printer and I can't get very nice skin tones because as I said, the print is going to be made up of very sharp lines and they don't blend so well as with inkjet printers. The resolution doesn't matter so much because my, my laser printer actually has a really high resolution and my inkjet printer has a really high resolution as well, but the method, the way they add the ink or toner onto the paper is very different and even though the resolution is very high, it's not going to get the same result when it comes to smoothness and transition between colors. So when it comes to quality, as in like smoothness and trueness to the original photo, an inkjet printer is always going to beat laser printers because it's just not the same method. And even if it's a cheaper inkjet printer, it's going to look slightly better than a, a very good laser printer. Now, when it comes to color, Again, a basic inkjet printer is not necessarily better than a very good laser printer, but, but laser printers usually only have three colors, C and Y. But as I said, inkjet printers can go up to even 10 colors, which is going to give you a much wider range of colors available to your printer, so it's going to be much more accurate. The main verdict is that if picture quality matters to you a lot, then always go for an inkjet printer. It's not even a question. However, if you are used to a kind of bookshop quality books or standard indigo printed photo books, then a laser printer is going to be very close to that. Now, an, an indigo printer is a little bit better than, an, than a laser printer, but it uses the same method and same technology. And basically it's still going to be made up of tiny dots which do not blend as well as in an inkjet print. Now, as you can see on this second example here as well, that the sky in the inkjet print is very smooth and a nice continuous blue, whilst on the laser print, it looks very grainy and it looks like it's been made up of little color blocks. And when you look at the skin tone as well, although the laser looks much sharper when it comes to detail, the skin tones look a lot nicer on the inkjet and a lot smoother. And again, these prints were printed on a basic inkjet printer, not even on a ProGraph 1000, which uses 10 different inks. 
So I come to the end of this very long video and I, and I did say in the beginning that it's going to be long because there's so much to talk about. The verdict of the entire video is that if you are going to make a one-off photo book for yourself, then the best thing is to buy an inkjet printer because the startup cost is much cheaper. You've got a much wider choice of papers and it's going to be much nicer quality when it comes to photographs. If you are going to make photo books on a regular basis at home, or if you are making a bigger run of one single book, for example, a classroom you want to make for them, a yearbook or something like that, then a laser printer is going to be much more beneficial because the quality of the photos do, does not matter quite as much there. It's still going to look good, like a bookshop quality book, but it's not going to look like professional photographs. However, the price per copy of these books is going to be a lot cheaper when you use a laser printer. It's going to have consistent results and it's a lot faster. I forgot to talk about this when it comes to quality. Printing out 100 pages on my laser printer is so, so much faster than printing out 100 pages on my inkjet printer. I have to wait hours and hours for that to finish and you have to put the paper back and um, manually turn it whilst my laser printer can do automatic duplex printing and I press print, I go out to, have, to go for a walk or a run, I come back and my book is ready. So there's that difference as well. So when it comes to bulk or long run, projects, ideas, if you want to print books at a regular basis, then the cost is going to be much smaller when it comes to laser printers, it's going to be faster. But if you are making one book, Inkjet is a better investment. And also if photo quality is really important to you, then Inkjet is always going to beat laser printers. So I hope this um, gave you a little insight into what are the most important things to consider before you start making a photo book or any kind of book project at home that requires printing. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments under this video. I will try to answer them, but again, if it's a question that requires a 10 page answer, then I probably won't be able to assist in that manner. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.